This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're going to start today's show with another roundup of EV sales data from around the world. And while some of these are automaker specific, some are general sales data points we think are worth celebrating. We're going to start with the news that in the US last year, an incredible 1.3 million electric vehicles were registered, up 7.3% over 2023. Sales continue to remain strong through until the end of the year, with December enjoying the usual end-of-year sales spike as people cash in on tax incentives before the year's end. Meanwhile, in China, sales data shows new energy vehicles, that's electric, plug-in hybrid and fuel cells, sold 12.9 million examples last year. That's up 35.5% on the previous year. EVs accounted for the lion's share of NEVs sold by the end of the year, although I've been unable to get sources of data to agree on specific numbers. And that leads us to the news that globally, EV sales went up pretty much everywhere last year other than in Europe. Data from Row Motion shows that EV sales grew by 3.5 million units last year, far larger than the 3.2 million vehicle increase EVs saw in 2023. Despite what pundits might have you believe, this does prove EV sales and the rate of EV adoption is on the rise. Now let's turn to brand-specific figures and the BMW Group, which showed that it sold 368,523. That's up 11.6% year over year. It sold just over 166,500 plug-in hybrids. Audi has confirmed that it sold 164,500 EVs last year, down 7.8% year over year when compared to its 178,400 units sold in 2023. Audi's sister brand, Volkswagen Passenger Cars, also published its details for 2024, with 383,100 EVs sold globally. That's down 2.7% on the 393,700 of the previous year. Škoda also saw a poor EV sales for last year, selling 79,600 EVs last year compared to the 81,700 of the previous year. That 2.0% drop follows the pattern of European EV brands selling fewer EVs last year while the rest of the world grew. But one Volkswagen Group brand that did well was Seat and its sibling brand Cupra. Combined, it saw a 6% increase in sales year over year from the 45,300 of 2023 to 48,000 in 2024. And finally, for the Volkswagen Group, Porsche had a poor year, selling 3.7% fewer EVs last year than it did in the previous year. While the Macan EV enjoyed a not too terrible start to sales, Taycan sales were pretty terrible, lowering Porsche BEV sales to 39,100. With poor EV sales from Europe out of the way, let's celebrate some good news for Rivian, which outsold all other electric vans in 2024, achieving 19,423 sales of its electric delivery vehicle last year. It outsold the Ford e-Transit and Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter. While the global EV sales data I've just shared should reiterate that EVs are still popular and in demand, many politicians around the world, including those in the US, would like you to believe otherwise, using that as an excuse to roll back fuel efficiency and emission standards. But a new survey from Consumer Reports suggests that the majority of Americans support stricter rather than looser fuel economy standards. It asked just under 2,200 adults about their opinions of better gas mileage and 91% of the people it surveyed drove ICE vehicles. The overwhelming majority of respondents, 64%, said that the US government should continue to increase and implement tougher federally mandated fuel economy standards. And what's more, support for increasing economy and emission standards was split fairly evenly across party lines, making better fuel economy and lower emissions a bipartisan goal, something that many politicians seem to have missed the memo about. 
Ford says that it is in the process of investigating a terrifying ordeal involving a Mustang Mark E in which a nine-month-old baby was left trapped inside during hot weather after the doors failed to open. As reported earlier this week, a Ford Mustang Mark E owner had parked up and got out of their vehicle to charge in San Fernando Valley, California. In between getting out of the car and going back to the seat to retrieve her baby, the car stopped responding and the doors could not be opened. In the end, her husband was left to smash the window to gain access to the rear of the vehicle. Like so many modern EVs, the Ford Mustang Mark E has electronically operated door releases, and if the 12 volt accessory battery dies, those doors cannot be opened without first jump starting the car using a special cutout in the front bumper. If you have an EV without mechanical door handles, it's important that you make sure you understand how to gain entry if something happens with your car's battery before something bad happens. As we've proven earlier in this show, EV sales around the world trended upwards last year, but sadly, so too did something else, a vandalisation and cable theft from EV charging stations. If you're lucky, the damage is just frustrating, like the time I found an entire sausage smushed into the CCS handle of a charging station in central Oregon. But sometimes that damage means that you can't charge, which, if you're really unlucky, could scupper your plans in Highly. This week, ChargePoint unveiled its latest attempt to tackle vandals and thieves, announcing a new cable for charging stations that it claims are cut resistant, along with a new charging station software designed to sound alarms if tampering and or vandalism is detected. ChargePoint's video showing someone taking an angle grinder to its charge cable is impressive, and the software upgrades to enable its new ChargePoint protection system are due to roll out to new and existing charging infrastructure this month. Tesla has officially unveiled its newest iteration of its Model Y SUV, the Model Y Juniper. Similar to the Model 3 refresh of last year, the Model Y gets an almost complete reworking from the ground up, with new front and rear light clusters, a brand new interior and cabin improvements. Interestingly, unlike the Model S, X and 3, Tesla seems to have opted to keep a physical indicator stalk in Model Y, although the gear selector mechanism is shifted to the centre console as it is in other vehicles. Tesla says the refreshed model has improved efficiency and acceleration with the extended range all-wheel drive Model Y seeing just over a half second cut from its sprint time. There's no performance version listed yet, but if you are in certain markets in Asia, Australia or Aotearoa, New Zealand, you can now place an order for one with the outgoing Model Y available for heavy discounts. Tesla has confirmed Giga Berlin has also started making new Model Y variants, so expect additional availability in other markets very soon. And finally for the segment, Tesla's CEO has spent quite a lot of time in the last six months railing against the outgoing US White House administration, including its support for EVs through generous tax incentives. He's even gone on the record as saying he is in favour of repealing all EV and clean energy tax incentives. But this week, the very same person was upset that Tesla didn't find itself the recipient of a federal funding programme to build a charging corridor for electric big rigs. Posting, here we go again, sigh, end quote, in response to a user post on X that said, quote, Tesla snubbed for big rig charging again, end quote. Tesla's bankrolling CEO was unhappy that Tesla's application for $100 million out of a total $636 million of federal grant funds for electric truck charging was rejected. But since then, he's also mocked rival firms for applying for US federal low interest loans when Tesla itself benefited from those same loan programs back in the 20 teens. So it's not exactly an unexpected emotional response. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay those pesky RUCs and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. 
in just a few days' time, the United States will hold the inauguration of Donald Trump as its 47th president. But before that takes place, we're seeing a rush of changes taking place as outgoing US President Joe Biden leaves his mark on the White House and the country. And some of those changes could have big consequences on EVs in the US and around the world. One of them, a new set of rules from the U.S. Commerce Department, is effectively banning Chinese and Russian-made cars and trucks from being imported to the U.S. While there are already some pretty big restrictions into which vehicles can and cannot be sold in the country, there's been a lot of misreporting associated with this story, so as usual, we want to make sure we get the context right. First, the ban is on automotive hardware or software, including that used for communications or autonomous driving, from importing into the US. The ban doesn't cover software or hardware that's already been made, meaning existing vehicles that use Chinese or Russian-made tech can continue to be sold. The ban also doesn't come into full effect until 2029 for hardware and 2027 for software. Also, it's important to note that there are some loopholes and carve-outs, so if you'd like a more in-depth dive into that, let us know in the down below. And finally, we are all used to claims that EVs aren't all that good for folks who live in remote or rural areas, especially when the owner lives a really long way from a nearby service centre. But Subaru in the UK has just taken the first steps to prove that EVs can exist a long way from a dealership by sending a Solterra EV to the remote overseas UK territory of St Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean. The island is more than 1,200 miles off the southwest coast of Africa, and just getting there is a multi-day adventure. But Subaru has sent the Solterra there to help the island test out the suitability of EVs in the remote community. Utilising solar power generated on the island and charged by an easy charger that's just been installed, it's hoped the island's first Subaru EV will pave the way for the island to be zero emission in its transportation by the end of the decade. Subaru says it's confident that the car won't need any service visits during its two-month trial period, so we'll have to check back in about two months to see how it's doing. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, do check out other content on the channel, including from the lovely Gavin at Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's always doing something that's worth a look, so make sure that you've hit subscribe. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.